Bueno, Larry, hoy tenemos eh, un programa corto, un programa especial con, para mí, una persona muy especial y, sobre todo, que tiene mucho, mucho que ver con el éxito de Gol Sin Etiquetas. Porque, porque Gol Sin Etiquetas, pues, pues somos, somos tú, somos es, es Espinedo y, 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 y yo soy la tercera pata, pero yo creo que el gran éxito de este programa es nuestro logo. Lo mejor que tiene este programa es el logo de Gol Sin Etiquetas. Yo no he dado un duro, Gonzalo. Al final, cuando, cuando esta aventura empezaba, eh, hablábamos de, oye, tenemos que tener un logo y, y un nombre, ¿te acuerdas? Cuando empezamos con, lo, con los nombres y tal. Y de dijiste, gol sin etiquetas. Dije, coño, pues, pues suena bien. Oye, y, y de logo, ¿qué cojones hacemos? Oye, yo tengo una foto chula, no sé qué. Y no sé dónde la metiste, no sé qué ordenador, no sé qué, qué programa, y salió eso y la verdad que, la verdad que es, es nuestra, nuestra segunda identidad, con lo que con lo que Ross, eh, nuestro invitado, es, es una persona especial para nosotros, es, es nuestro padre, podríamos decir. Es casi la cuarta pata de esta mesa de Gol Sin Etiquetas, es desde luego nuestro invitado, nuestro invitado esta tarde, eh, esta tarde noche. Eh, us, para los que no lo conozcan, eh, bueno, es, eh, hoy tenemos con nosotros a Ross Kinnard, de, que es un fotógrafo que lleva trabajando en el mundo del golf pues desde que yo empecé en el Tour, por lo menos. Ahora nos contará él, pero bueno, es, eh, como digo, un auténtico genio, pero en vez de con el pad o con el driver, es un genio con la cámara de fotos. Así que sin más dilación, eh, esta tarde tenemos eh, a Ross Kinner. Hello, Ross. Gonzalo. Nice Welcome. Welcome to Golf Scene Etiquetas. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. I, we were saying, I, mean, I know, I know your Spanish is 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 not is is not good. Um, so we were saying, I mean, one of, I mean, part of the success of this podcast is our amazing logo. And 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 there's only there's only one person here who who can tell us about the story. But we let's let's get that on. Uh, let's leave that for the end because I mean we have we have to keep the people uh, just expecting and wanting more. So Ross, it's an absolute pleasure to have you to have you here with us. Um, I was saying, I mean, when I very when I got on tour, uh, which was just uh, probably 20 years ago, you were already there. Um, so please tell us about your story, your background. Uh, and what took you to, I mean, to, to, to take the photos on, 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 on about professional golf? Yeah, well, I was doing many of other, plenty of other sports before golf, but I sort of think the first time I took pictures of you could well have been the Jacques Leglise trophy, uh, which could have been up at Nairn in Scotland, if I remember. Indeed, indeed, so, I do yeah, remember. I mean, and I still remember. Uh, there's some great pictures about about that week. I mean, I was wearing a, a, a red vest, uh, short sleeve. I still remember. I've got some amazing, amazing pictures on an amazing course. One of my favorites in the world, by the way. Oh, I do remember it. Remember it well. Yeah, but uh, no. So golf, uh, sports photography has always been an interest. Uh, my dad was a keen amateur photographer. So that sort of started me off many, many years ago. Um, I used to shoot a lot more news and other events. And, and an agency I worked for in Nottingham, we realised that you can't diary the news, but you can diary sport. So we could build a business around a timetable of events. And we just took our chance. We went to different events. We started to go abroad, shoot football matches in in Europe and Eastern Europe, places where it was really difficult to get your pictures home. So that sort of is the start. And then from there, I gathered a bit of a reputation, which was a bonus. Uh, I joined All Sport, which are now Getty Images, and that is nearly 30 years ago. So it's been a lot of fun. They've been very good to me. I've seen a lot of places. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you have, uh, Ross. Um, listen, we saw, we can see on the background a lot of badges. Uh, so, I mean, that's uh, you've definitely been places. Uh, do you remember your your first golf tournament? Uh, when and, and where was it? I do. I sort of put it into two categories. So I, I did a couple of golf tournaments um sort of as a 
on a day by day basis. When I when if a newspaper commissioned it, I would go and shoot that event for a day. Uh, one of them being the Weetabix Women's Open up at in Nottinghamshire. Um, then we would shoot anything that came into our region. So the Ryder Cup, way back when, pre Sam Torrance Day, uh, I just remember going along one random Saturday to shoot a, a day at the Ryder Cup for one of the Sunday newspapers. But the the real pressure was when Getty sent me out on my own to cover the whole tournament, um, and that was the Madeira Open. And <laughs> that, as you know, is at the top of the mountain, that golf course. It's That's tough. The, the end of the world. It's, it is like the end of the world. The, the flight in was treacherous because the aeroplane's coming over the sea and if it's, that little island gets windy. So uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. How how uh, Ross? How did you? How much did you mess up as a rookie on that very first that tournament in Madeira? <laughs> you are chasing your tail because you, as you know, Gonzalo, the ninth comes up to the top, the eighteenth comes up to the top, and the holes are all around the bottom. So with a two tee start, if you're on the wrong half of the course, trying to chase the leader, it takes you forever. It's exhausting. Hopefully, I didn't miss too much, but there was certainly some issues. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, um, I was. Um, we were talking. We were talking before. Um, I mean, what's what's harder, uh, Ross? It's it. Is it? I mean, of all the sports you've done, what which is probably the the hardest or the most difficult? I mean, definitely on golf. Every time I see you run the course, I mean, carrying the equipment, which is not particularly um, light, um, and especially on the rainy days, you are outdoors. You have to be moving around. I guess. I mean, I see some, sometimes I see the, the 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 photographers at, for example, football, and they they are most of the time they're on the same spot. Um, they don't move around much, same on tennis. But I mean, yours is it's uh, golf is a different animal. You're so right. I'm going to write some of this down and tell my colleagues that you've got it dead right. Because if you're shooting football, and it is a great sport to shoot, but if we have two photographers, three at a game, you can position yourselves around the pitch and then you have your own area of responsibility. But golfers move around. It's a long day. If you get a request saying, oh, I need a picture of Gonzalo with his new Srix on irons, I've got to work out where you are, what time of the day, when did you tee off? I don't want you hitting a wedge, I need you hitting an iron. So you, there's a logistic side to golf photography as well as the, the, the pretty picture side. And that's demanding but very enjoyable. And, 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 and Ross, of all the different sports you've done, um, which is the one you've, you, you, you enjoy the most? Other than golf, of course. Other than golf, I really enjoyed shooting football. Uh, I shot... Everybody shoots a lot of football. And my first big international tournament was the Euro Champs in Sweden in 88. Um, and then my first World Cup was Italia 90. And Let me. It's, it's, does it has to do with a, a bit with this picture here? Look, 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 look what we found here. I know this picture is yours, and, and this is this is the real deal. This is the real Ronaldo. The real Ronaldo. That is so. He was so good. But that is a few years later. So that was France 98. Um, and the difference between now and then that was taken on film so that presented a, a few more challenges than the digital cameras are today tell us tell us tell us about the evolution of photography because there's there's definitely that we've, we've here in this in this in this program we talk about we talk a lot about about um about the evolution of, of in golf i mean we've seen the evolution with equipment uh, we've seen the evolution of of the players how i mean how physical it's become now and and it's all about distance and and but i guess i mean photography i'm, I'm sure it has it has changed a lot since since your since since you be since you you began working on it it has it has literally uh, we used to process film in a changing bag Uh, have a little scanner with us, you cut the negative, you put the negative into the scanner, 
log into somebody's telephone line and you send it back to your office. Now from the camera, I can catch it, connect send it from the golf course and it can be with an editor within 10, 20 seconds. And of the, the, one of the biggest differences was when you're shooting film, you had 36 frames to play with before you put another film in. And every film costs money. So you you may go to a golf event and you may shoot six rolls of film, which is going to be 200 frames. I can shoot 200 frames 30 minutes after the first guy's teed off today because it's it's all there. It's instant. It's, there's no cost to the digital. Um, so it's a little bit of a shame because... Being a little bit older and old-fashioned and a little bit with the golf, I think the technology hasn't made a good photographer better. It's made a lot of other photographers good. And I'd see a little bit of that in golf. I'm sure you do. I, I, I was going to say that, Ross. I think that's exactly what's what's what what's happened in the, in the golf business. Don't you think, Larry? I mean, all these new equipment, it just makes... I think the average player, uh, I mean, the best player is still going to be great. You know what I mean? The, the top guys are still going to still gonna perform. It doesn't matter if you, gave them, if you give them a persimmon driver or the latest Callaway. But but I have to say, I mean, there's players or there's some players that aren't as talented. But now with the, with the new equipment, uh, they definitely can, 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 can perform. Yeah, the, the, the artist will always be an artist. And... Uh... Like uh, for for a photographer, I guess there's the technical part of it, and but uh, uh, scouting the best spots and and having the best angles is is like an art. So uh, I guess the the best will always be the best. But uh, as you said perfectly, right now uh, almost everyone can can play decent golf and and with a, with a lot of practice uh, can can uh, can be a, a proper player. Um, but it, it wasn't it wasn't like that in the past for sure. Where when when if you don't hit the ball in the center of the club face, you you would not be able to 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 perform or to even play golf. So I guess photography might be the the, the, the same thing. Larry, very similar, absolutely. It's I still think I have to boss the camera around. The cameras are so good. They're they're like your phone. They're computers that take pictures. They're so clever. But the guy holding the camera still needs to be the boss. So you've still got to know what you're trying to achieve. Um, and that's the same with golf. If you're just going to bomb the driver down and pray, that's my type of game. So, uh, yeah, no, it's there's, a, there's certain similarities with golf and photography. Well, Ross, before we go into the into the real story, um, I want to show these other pictures that you sent me, which I think it's um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, we talk about. I've always thought that 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 being a a, a photographer on a on, on on tour was difficult, especially on pro, and it's more than difficult, risky, risky. I mean, I always felt that you guys were are very brave. I've been standing where you where you normally stand, especially on pro and days. But then you sent me this picture, and I go. What the hell? I mean, where was Ross? <laughs> where was he standing here? Yeah, there's a little bit of a cheating going on in a professional way. So that is Aintree, the Grand National, which is probably um, and Brook is one of the most formidable fences. So that year, a number of us would put remote cameras down in a, just a safe distance from the and we would trigger them by a, a second you're getting two goes at it and the the, the big one well, Ross, uh, uh, here in Spain the logo is like a legend right now I mean it's it's everybody knows our logo is the it's 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 a uh, national famous um, Please, please tell us a bit about the, the story of the logo. I, uh, we all know uh, there's a guy breaking a club, um, but since you are the 
the, the, the father of the logo. Uh, please tell, tell us a bit about the story. Yeah, absolutely. And there is a question I have for Gonzalo towards the end of this little story. So uh, we are at Wentworth. It's the ninth fairway, which was always a favourite spot of photographers. It was a lovely, clean background. It's his second shot, Gonzalo's second shot into the ninth. Uh, not that spectacular at the beginning. He hits a shot. So then all of a sudden it develops quickly. <laughs> but holding it above his head, snapping it. It didn't snap first time, so he had to break it and wriggle it free. Um, his caddy, Jeff, is watching all this go on and looking at me as though to say, <laughs> you're in trouble now, he's seen you. And I'm thinking, wow, I'll just if it's on the golf course, I'm just taking it, that's whatever. But the funny thing is, yeah, so there's the look from Gonzalo, that's one of my favourites. <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm thinking, oh my word, where has he hit this ball? So I start running down towards the ninth green, thinking he must be in trouble somewhere. And um, I'm pretty sure, Gonzalo, you hit it to the front edge of the green. It wasn't. It, it wasn't even wild. That's one. <laughs> it wasn't that, that bad. Was... <laughs> you are absolutely <laughs> right. But for some reason, every time I play, I played Wentworth. That club, that golf course, brings the worst out of me. <laughs> but not the worst as in as in as in as in the way I play. Just, I mean, I, I, I just never played well there. I, I don't think I ever will play well there. And it just drives me nuts. Those swilling winds. I mean, even though it's one mm. an amazing tournament, an amazing venue, fantastic crowds. I mean, it's our signature event. Whatever. I mean, that place drives me nuts. <laughs> Still does. It, it gave me one of my favourite sequences of all time, though. So, and looking it up for you, I forgot that you were in, like, pink and white. It's, it looks so good. It's everything I could hope for in a sequence. Well, I, I, do, I, do, I do remember very vividly, I mean, hitting the shot, breaking the club, and as soon as I'm breaking, I, I'm here that click, 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 and all of a sudden I go, because every time before you break a club, you always look around. You look around, there's no rules official. <laughs> you look around that there's nobody watching. But, I mean, so here I go. Because nine, unless I mean, if you are in the in the in the big groups, um, every I mean, they follow you around. But it wasn't the case. And nine, as you said, is quite a quiet hole. I mean, nobody mm. really to nine. Everybody seems to stay on the tenth green and and on the eighth tee box. They get to see, but they they very rarely, rarely go down to and see and follow eight and nine. So so here I am. I say, okay, this is the time. I break my club, and next time, next thing I hear is click 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 click. click. I go, where is he hiding? I mean, and under a pine tree, there's Ross. I mean, he looks more yeah, like, a, I, like a sniper. He's not a photographer. He's more like a sniper hiding in, in the woods. You know that little area. So the fairway runs up straight away, but there's a little dip and a, a hump with a big tree. And we can just sit quite nicely under there and <laughs> click away. It was Because there was no mirrorless cameras in those days. I think so my face, didn't make a noise. I think my face just says it all. <laughs> so good, Ross. Ross uh, 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 I mean, th those that set of, of of pictures of the whole of the whole thing, it looks like like if it it was taken in a I mean in a in a studio. Like it's so perfect. The angles of the leg. I mean, it's it's a perfect broken club. And is it for you like? Having a, a, a chance of, of, of taking those pictures is, is it like a, a, a for 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 the guy that goes in a safari uh, taking the best picture of a leopard or something very special because you always take pictures of of, of perfect swings or whatever or maybe a, a gesture but uh, but having that. Perfectly broken club. It, it, it might be uh, some special one. You're so right, Larry. Because golfers, there, that's not difficult. And I'd learned a lesson years ago shooting a football match, where the goalkeeper caught the ball, and the striker had missed the header and ran round and headed it out of his hands. And I'm pretty well just watching it like a spectator. And I, I that was a 25 years ago, but it taught me that 
the moment hasn't finished until it's really finished. So the fact that he's hit the ball, anything could happen. He could have a little chat with his caddy slightly nicely or put it on less nicely. Uh, but the reaction afterwards is the emotion. And once they start walking and chatting, it's, it's done. But you just keep concentrating because that minute after the shot, that's when their emotions are at their highest. Where's the ball gone? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they? So that's, yeah, that's what you're looking for. A bit of emotion. Say, the, the artist will always be an artist. And if, if you have to be there to, to and, and be concentrated to have the, the best shot. And that was one, one good one. Uh, that was our logo. I mean, we are we are very proud. Like our followers, uh, they they draw it, and it's it's amazing. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. So so Ross, um, how many how how many scenes like like that one you've seen? You must have witnessed a lot of broken clubs through your career. You must have an uh, album. Uh, Ross, do you have my brother in one of those sequences? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, you could name a few likely candidates. <laughs> Thomas Peters, he likes to snap the odd club, as you. Uh, Patrick Henrik Reed, Stenson. Henrik Stenson. Henrik is classic, absolute classic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the new boys are a bit different. They they're so calm, and they must all just have a psycho coach making sure their temperaments in check. But the older guys, sort of. A bit more of my era, yeah. They would, they were lively. The new guys are a bit more in control, but the older guys, Monty was an absolute classic. So he, he wasn't frightened of putting a photographer in his place. I remember being in Ireland, and with a couple of other experienced photographers and a couple of less so, and we get to a bunker, and one of the young lads thinks, oh, he needs to move to a better position, and he moves late Monty is already ready and then Monty stands up and just gives us both barrels you guys I'm the fastest player out here you need to be ready when I'm ready and I stood there like a scolded schoolboy even though I'd probably been doing it for 15 years so, <laughs> so yeah there was some, loads of funny times Funny story about Monty. Uh, my third tournament as a pro was this was a Madrid Open here at Club de Campo. So I wasn't even, even I wasn't even married at the time. So um, uh, my my future to be wife Alice, um, she wanted to come see me play. So she didn't know Club de Campo well. So, so I said to her, "Well, Alice, why don't you come join me on the 13th green? You're going to be able to park the car there by the driving range. So join me by the 13th." So I'm playing with Monty, uh, and Monty was having one of those days. <laughs> it was one of those days he was giving grief to the, well, I mean, it's, I mean, to a photographer on the ninth. He gave him so much shit. Anyhow, we get to 14, and there's always like a, on the 14th tee, my wife just shows up. There's like a good crowd. When Monty's about to hit, there goes her phone, full volume on. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Monty was about to, and, and I had to stop him. I said, Monty, excuse me, that was my girlfriend. Please excuse her. It's her first time on the golf course. It won't happen again because he was ready to go at her. I mean, I mean, I still remember. I mean, he laughed at it because, I mean, if Monty, he, he had a very good sense of humor. And, um, but yeah, when he's having one of those days, Monty, I mean, let me tell you about that day. We played together. I think he shot one of the easiest 65s I've ever seen. And he hit two shots. And one was in that on that very same hole, 14. Another one on fifth. He hit two drivers off the deck. I kid you not, the farthest of the two was probably four feet away from the hole. Two mm -hmm. drives off the deck onto those par fives in two. I've never seen anything like that. It was, I mean, it was fun to watch. But it was also fun when he was when he was in a bad too. Yeah, you're dead right. He... Off the course, he is one of the nicest guys. On the course, he gives you everything you need as a photographer within a about... <laughs> Easy. It's so easy with Monty. <laughs> um ross um yeah, I mean as 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 we said, um I mean if there's ever if what's probably let's say what was the worst 
bad timing. Let's talk about bad timing because I've always, first time I went to a tennis tournament, I always found interesting or different that all the photographers are taking their pictures when 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 they're serving and the ball is at the top, which I would think is the, the moment probably of, of the highest concentration. There goes all the clicks, click, 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 click. And the, and the players, as they are used to it, they don't seem to bother. But in golf, that's a different story. Um, was there ever a, a really bad timing for a for 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 a camera click in, in, in on on your watch? Oh yeah, yeah, more <laughs> more than you'd imagine. It's a long career, and you do make some mistakes. But two Irishmen, so the Dunhill links with Padraig Harrington, and Padraig used to have a very strange putting. He's strained Padraig, as we know, but his putting routine was that he'd have his practice swings. And then he wouldn't shuffle forward. He would just lean and hit it. And I'm trying to take pictures of his pro-am partners, Dermot Desmond and JP McManus. And I'm looking at them with Padre there, and I'm thinking I've got it all covered. And I click absolutely at the wrong time. And we're out on the 12th green at St Andrews. There's nobody there except four golfers and me. So I'm... In the firing line. <laughs> it was me there was no denying it <laughs> and i look to podrick and he just carries on and i get to the tee and i said oh podrick i'm so sorry you know I, it was a total act. he said oh you guys you're fine this that and the other and then another time with darren clark at forest of arden billy foster was caddying at the time a par five so I think it could have been like seven, eight, a little par three, nine. I think that's right. His second shot, I just go early by mistake. Click, click, click. He hits it, pulls it left into the rough up by the green. And Billy Foster just walks past me as a little bit early there, Ross. And I'm just, <laughs> yes. I know I'm early. And uh, I'm fearful of Darren. He was a frightening character. And it could be in a mood. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna... does, does the technology will take that those little noises out uh, from the cameras? Got, that absolutely. Now, at the Ryder Cup and the Open, they have to be mirrorless. So there is no sound. Oh, so okay. uh, the only real problem you can get into now is if you move at the wrong time. Padre Carrington used to say, if you stand still, I just think you're an object. You could be a tree for all he knows. But, and I'm sure as Gonzo would say, if you move late, that's what distracts the golfer. The noise, yes, but somebody just moving on a putt or doing whatever, that's, if I'm in the wrong position, I just stay still and I'm going to be out there for another five hours. It's, it's fine. For me, for me, um, Ross, I would say it's it's all about how confident I'm 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 standing on top of the shot. If I'm absolutely focused and confident with the shot I'm I'm, I'm want to hit, it doesn't matter if if some people move or a, a telephone goes on. I just go go ahead and hit it. But if I'm not truly on the shot or I've got I've got question marks and and I'm not certain about the shot or the club, I mean, if a bird sings 300 yards away, it would distract me. You know what I mean? It's, so it's, I think for me, it's more about if how concentrated and, and, and in the zone, as they, as they call it now, you are. But, but yeah, I mean, it's if you stand still, as you said, you are. You are the problem, you know, Gonzalo, is that you are 95% of the times in the, in the, second, in the second option. So you could be so still like a stone and you could distract Gonzalo. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The, somebody opening a bag of crisps could disturb them, let alone, you know, if it comes at the wrong time, that sound. But some of the guys are so different. Um, this guy's Pablo. Um, I love taking pictures of Pablo because he gives you something all the time. If he makes a birdie or whatever, he knows his environment. He'll a little acknowledgement. He gives you a celebration. Also, if it's going in the other way, he's not frightened of showing his emotions. And that's we need those guys. Golf needs those characters. To be one of my favorite pictures. Um... And 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 this is this is yours. Um, 
tell, tell us about this this amazing picture and and tell us how is it following tiger because following gonzalo fernandez castaño is no problem because there's nobody there with me watching but i mean trying to follow this guy around i remember that first time i played with tiger it wasn't i wasn't i mean of course i was i i was more afraid of the of the whole kind of spectacle that goes around tiger and and in terms of cameras uh, TV cameras, photographers, um, just press, media. It's it's more about the people inside the ropes that follow Tiger than than the crowds itself or the or the fact that that of playing with Tiger. It's 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 like a circus. It sure is. It, it's been magnificent having Tiger as the number one sportsman in my career in my sport. That's been the big bonus, without a shadow of a doubt. But it, you, you're on your guard when you're with Tiger. If you're up close, I'm holding my breath as I'm taking that picture. I'm just waiting for that moment, and I'm literally not breathing. And click, and then off you go. But um, the picture you just showed there is one of my favourites because it's, it's sort of Ben Hogan-esque almost. It, I really like the way that Tiger's just relaxed. He's waiting on the green. I think it was a PGA Championship in Carolina that we had a rain delay. So Tiger had gone back out on the course the following morning and he was on the back nine in the light, which we wouldn't normally get. So, so the, the rain delay was a menace, but the good light at the wrong time of day was a bonus. And... Yeah, that is just one of my favourite pictures of Tiger. Look, Ross, could I could I buy that that, that picture from you? I would I would uh, mark it uh, like uh, Tiger is not my idol; he is my god. I mean, I'm I'm uh, Tiger is the most important thing in the world, so I would like to have it uh, on my wall. If, I could. if it's just for your wall, you can have one. It's if it my, goes any on further. The Getty Images will have my head on a chopping block. <laughs> in, in, in a couple, in, in a month or so, you would see that Medina flag and whatever, and on top or so, uh, your picture. I love it. I think it's I think it's just brilliant. Thank you very much. That's you're very kind. Yeah, we can sort that for you. No problem. Ross, let me disagree on that. I think you are Getty Images. So if you decide that picture is going, that picture is going. No? So I mean, it's uh, Getty Images. Uh, they are very, very fortunate to have you on board. Uh, because let me tell you, from the players, and I think I talk on behalf of, 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 of all the players, it's always a joy uh, to see you on the course. Uh, you are a true professional, always, always with a smile. It doesn't matter if it's raining or if it's, or if it's sunny and 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 you can tell from the distance the here comes ross and 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 you can tell that you and really enjoy uh what you do and 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 you do it very very well and and thank you it's been an absolute pleasure uh to to have you on the show look we have even done some merchandising with your logo which of course i'm gonna get you i mean you get us the picture but i'm gonna pro where we're gonna provide you with i mean because this is this is this is this is your your thing. So well, I have to, I have to fit, I have to fit it properly. But again, um, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. I think it's this is this is going to be a great a great show, and people are actually going to love it. I should have got had this ready before. Does this visor look the visor, the visor is your trademark. There you go. There you go. So I'm gonna. But I'll get you a cap. I, I know you are more of a cap guy, eh, Ross. So I'll get you a cap. Anything. <laughs> your anything no you're always very welcome guys i've thoroughly enjoyed it anytime been, anything i can help you with just let me know you've done you've done more than enough already russ uh so thank you very much uh and again i mean thanks for all these years and all these amazing pictures that you're taking through the years because uh yeah you're gonna give larry the one from tiger but i do have a lot of memories here at home uh, that you've that you've created and and i'm really i'm really thankful for that so thank you russ Thanks Thank you very much. Thanks. Alex, you're very welcome. Thank you both. Excellent. Oye, Larry, qué, 
que, que, es, que, que divertido, la verdad. No, no pensé que el programa con Rossi iba a ser tan cachoto. Y es que, claro, es que tantos años, desde el año 90, haciendo fotos da, da para mucho. Pero es verdad, es verdad. ¿Cómo ha evolucionado el, la fotografía? Ya nos lo contó María Cate, en, la, en las, las salas de prensa, cuando tenían que armar las zonas de revelado y demás. Eh, ¿Cómo ha cambiado la fotografía? Eh, lo importante que es tener jugadores, pues eso, con personalidad, con... Que, que muestren emoción y demás. Y no sé, a mí me, la verdad, desde luego me ha, me ha divertido mucho y por supuesto la historia del logo que yo la conocía bien, pero, pero bueno, espero que te haya gustado. Gonzalo, yo creo que ahora tienes ya motivos para, para mandar a, a los patrocinadores para que, te, para que te inviten a los torneos y al final necesitan caracteres como tú. No, la verdad que ha estado espectacular, eh, ha sido muy entretenido. Yo creo que en el programa pues tener a a gente del mundo, eh, pues, pero de, de, de otras facetas, creo que es interesante y, y, y más si Ross eh, creó lo que, lo, que, lo que ahora es nuestro, nuestro emblema, eh, pues, pues yo pienso que ha sido, ha sido chulo, es, 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 muy, es muy divertido Ross, eh, tiene un humor así inglés muy, muy, muy divertido y yo me lo he pasado francamente bien. La foto de Tiger la veremos pronto en mi pared porque porque me parece un fotón, pero muy bestia, muy heavy. La foto, la foto de la galáctica, la foto de la galáctica. Eh, esta mañana le he pedido, digo, Ross, mándame, mándame tu foto favorita, porque yo sé, pues eso, hay fotos icónicas, ¿no? Eh, como, pues eso, la de Seven, el 18 de, de San Andrews y tal, y, y cuando me ha mandado esta y la de los caballos, digo, sí, la verdad es que esas dos son bastante, bastante molonas. Pero bueno, Claro, es, es lo que tiene. Cuando uno es bueno en lo suyo, pues, eh, pues hace eso, eh, no como nosotros, que aquí estamos, eh, ¿eh? <risa> <risa> que tenemos mal wifi, mal altavoz, mala luz, o sea, todo es un desastre, pero bueno, ya mejoraremos. Esto es, como es lo que hay, lo que más da. Es lo que hay, es lo que hay. Pero bueno, Larry, estoy de acuerdo contigo. Yo creo que estos programas en los que traemos a, a, a gente de la industria del golf eh, y, y, bueno, y, del, y del circo del golf, del circo profesional, que, que bueno, que muchas veces no vemos el, lo que pasa entre bastidores y, y y son, son, son estos profesionales también los que hacen que el, bueno, pues que el gol sea un auténtico éxito. Por cierto, hablando de la foto, exactamente el frame, el, 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 las fotos juntas, como las hemos visto antes, toda, la, toda, esta, toda esta secuencia de fotos, eh, que sepas que la vimos, o sea, a los dos meses de que ocurriese, de pronto un día estoy, pues no sé, viendo una, ojeando una revista de golf, página central, a doble página, se veía la secuencia tal cual la hemos puesto aquí en el programa. O sea, que es una foto que dio la vuelta al mundo, como andan muchas de Ross. Eh, Larry. Eh, no, 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 hay que imaginarse a Ross con, con la edad que tiene ya. Eh, con el equipo encima que, que no pesa menos de 15 kilos, todo el tinglado, las varias cámaras, todos los eh, eh, enfoques, tal igual, eh, en un día de lluvia, eh, desde las 7 de la mañana hasta las 5 de la tarde, o sea, ese hombre es, es, un, es un superviviente. O sea, mí, yo, yo, cuando, yo cuando iba de Cádiz con la bolsa, me parecía que era un privilegiado con todo aquel mamotreto encima, comparado con los pobres fotógrafos, o sea, imagínate, sí. Eso. Y, y eso que se nos ha olvidado preguntarle los bolazos que le habrán dado, que habrán sido unos cuantos, pero sí, sí, <risa> profesión de riesgo. Eh, Larry, tenemos que hacer más programas especiales de estos porque son, bueno, pues eso, diferentes, especiales y, y, y bueno, espero que a la gente les divierta mucho, así que nada, primero de muchos. Nos vemos, Gonzalo. Un, Un abrazo. abrazo. Chao. Chao.